The second scripture lesson is from Galatians. We're not standing because it's not the gospel. Um, This is a reading that I have used for um, almost 26 years on the week before the 4th of July. Because Galatians 5 verse 1 and 13 to 25 talks about the freedom that we have from God so that we don't forget that when we're celebrating our nation's freedom, we also have God's freedom, which takes precedence. So, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, Let us also be guided by the Spirit. Thus ends our holy reading, and we ask that God help us to understand and to live according to it. Freedom. It's a word we hear a lot. We heard it this week in Britain with the Brexit. And then people turned right around and started Googling Brexit because they didn't know what it was that they voted to be out of. And now the whole European economy is in sort of a quandary while they try to figure that out. And those of you who follow the stock market know that it fell an incredible amount um, in reaction to that. But that was one way freedom was expressed. Freedom is the last word that was spoken by Mel Gibson in the epic movie Braveheart. Any of you see Braveheart? It's also the first word spoken when he voiced the character Rocky in the claymation movie Chicken Run. I've always liked the irony and the humor of that, though I'm not sure everyone else got it. Freedom. It's what we celebrate with parades and fireworks next week, weather permitting. Freedom, it's what this nation, what makes this nation so unique. In a sense, it's what brings us here today. Our freedom of religion allows us to gather and worship without fear of reprisal. And why do we worship? In part, because of the freedom from the burden of guilt and sin, which Christ took upon himself. Freedom. We all have different ideas about what freedom is. I told you I was going to come out and ask a few questions. So I hope you have something ready. What does freedom mean to you? Um, Freedom from uh, no guilt. No guilt. Okay. He's going the Christ way. Alexa? Uh, The ability to make a choice. The ability to make a choice. That's a big one. (laughs) 
Uh, freedom is to have an opinion and respect another person's opinion. All right. I like some of these answers. Anybody here want to talk about freedom? Bob, you want to say anything what freedom is? Freedom is to be whom God made me to be. Right. Being whom God made us to be. Remember that. That's a big, big, big one. You're on the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> These looks I get. All right. Think about it because I'm going to do this again. Let's see. I warned Jean, so she's got to have something. I have to agree with everybody that has so far. <laughs> oh, <answers>. you. <laughs> what a way to wimp out. Freedom? Uh, for me, the ability to um, do whatever you want, Lord uh, Prizel. Without reprisal, not fear of everything as you go through your life. Anybody over here want one? Freedom from the law to live by grace. Okay. That's exactly what the scripture said, too. Now, the rest of you don't think you got off the hook. My sermon today includes walking up and down and talking to you a lot. Remember last week I said it was a downer, but this week was going to be fun? This time... Think about what you would miss the most if you didn't have freedom in this nation. Just think about it. While we celebrate our freedom, in the letter to Galatians, the Apostle Paul says, be careful. A precautionary word about using our freedom. He said, for Christ set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Being forgiven of sin by Christ doesn't give us an empty slate to go out and sin again if we want to. We can ask for forgiveness 70 times 70 times 70, but once freedom is yours, be grateful and treat it with gratitude. He goes on to say, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become servants to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, and I have preached this almost every week that I have been here. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Paul was talking to a group of Christians who were arguing about what it meant to be Christian. There were a group of Jews who had become Christians who wanted the Gentiles to be circumcised before they became Christians. In other words, become a Jew before you can become Christian. And Paul said that wasn't necessary. There was a faction with another um, apostle who did think that that was necessary, but not so Paul. And then he talked about getting rid of the fetters that we have, the binds, the ropes, the things that change, chain us, um, our regrets, our guilt, our um, wishes, all those things that keep us from being the people that, as someone said, God created us to be. And if you remember in Genesis, it is God created us in God's own image, male and female in God's own image image. So, how many of you know the Dixie, the Disney um, Pixar movie, Up? This will mean more to those who do, but it still is a good story. The basic story is about the adventures of Carl and Russell. Carl Fredrickson is a 78-year-old man stuck in the past and stuck in his home and the city wants to tear it down to put up office buildings. Carl thwarts them, he thinks, by tying thousands of balloons to his home, although in the movie I didn't count a thousand, a bunch of balloons to his home to make it float up and away. And um, what he didn't know was that there was a kid hiding in his house who was trying to get a badge for helping an old person. And he was determined to help Carl, even though Carl didn't want him helping an old person button filled out his sash and there would be a special um, ceremony for that and 
he hoped that his father, who wasn't very present in his life, would show up for that. And so the two of them float off in this house, raised by balloons. I don't ask you to figure out whether or not it's reasonable to consider that. It was a cartoon. So anything's possible in a cartoon. So while they were going through all their adventures, some of them good, some of them bad, they became close friends. And at the end, they both realized that the past and the things that they had hoped for that would never come true were the very things that were holding them down, keeping them from living the full life that they each wanted to. The closing scene is Russell at his ceremony, and Carl is the one who goes up and pins his help an old person button on the, on the sash. If you haven't seen it, rent it. It's a wonderful movie. I've used it for confirmation classes to help people understand the, the whole idea of helping one another means in any circumstances and letting go and letting God means um, that you don't hold on to things that um, don't help your freedom, don't help you being the person God created you to be. Now, that phrase, to love one another, to love your neighbor as yourself, that's what this whole reading was about. It listed all those things that were against the law of God. And then along comes Christ and says, you're free from the law. Not that you should go out and do all those things, but that you're free from the guilt and sin of the law because God's grace in Jesus Christ has set you free. And the thing that Paul and no one else in Scripture does is tell you how that works. And I believe that's because you're to figure that out for yourself and that it may be different for different people. I'm going to ask you now to tell me what would be the thing that you would miss the most if you... It's red. Does that mean it's on? Um... If you were to lose a freedom, which one would it be and why is it the worst? Um, let's see, missing, um, missing reading the newspaper. Okay, and why would that affect you? Well, probably the, uh, if we weren't free, um, we might not be allowed to read certain things. A lot of certain things. <laughs> okay, who else wants to go next? I'm going down this way. And then I'll get over there. Just warning you. What would you miss the most? Uh, being able to worship and express views and opinions. Okay. And why? Well, you could be end up in jail or be able not to do that, but the ability just to gather and be able to worship. Amen. And because you look like you don't want to, what would you most miss? Uh, I would miss the ability to move around freely when I choose and where I choose. Right. Hugh, you want to do another one? Sure, why not? I'd miss the uh, expectation that my grandchildren could grow to be what they were capable of being. Right. All right. Good one to miss. Anybody else? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to pick me, by the way. Okay. When you were up there. Is that the freedom you're going to miss? No, 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 no. <laughs> I would really miss the, uh, the right to bear arms. All right. How about you? The freedom not to respond when demanded to respond. <laughs> <laughs> As from dead poets. <laughs> right yeah, but Robin, got, Robin was funnier. <laughs> What would you miss? I will miss um, not being able to do what I want to do. That's a, a theme going through a lot of this, not being able to do what we want to do. Oh, you're used to talking because you're around kids. <laughs> I, I think the loss of choice, you know, the grocery stores we go to and the clothes we wear and the jobs we choose. Yep. Um, just being, thinking that we'd be told what we could and couldn't do. Right. And in America, we have more choices about everything. 
than ever anywhere else? You look like you want to say something, don't you? What happened to your arm? I really don't know. <laughs> it, uh, the freedom to have answers about what happened to your yeah, arm. Yeah, well, it's one day I guess I overstrained myself moving boxes or picking up my son or something like that. So, it's because we're older. Uh, not, <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll leave you alone then. I'm going to skip this corner unless you have something you'd like to say. Beth, what would you miss? I guess the freedom of religion to be able to, to serve our God how we want. Freedom of religion is, is a unique thing, folks. You know, we're, we're in a minority of countries who have that. Okay. Andy? Okay. All right, I've been calling you Randy since day one. Uh, <laughs> what is your name? It's Barry. Oh, Barry, that's right. <laughs> the, the freedom to, like, uh, like Dan said, uh, to worship the way I choose. Okay, and on when I'm texting you and Mike, I, I know that you are <laughs> not Randy. <laughs> I know that there are people in the other parts of the world, females who can't get an education. And knowing that I have the ability at any time, my children do, to get an education, the thought of that being taken away terrifies yeah. me. And God says girl power. All right. Who over here would like to be assaulted with the microphone in your face? Raise your hand. Come on, somebody, somebody. Somebody <laughs> snuck up on you. What would you miss the most if you lost all your freedom? I think freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Yeah. She was the only religion. I would hate to lose freedom of speech. Did you have your hand up, sweetie? Would you like to answer? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. That's an important one because nobody can tell us what to say, and freedom of speech even goes to people who say stupid things sometimes, but they have the right to say it, okay? Yeah, the middle is harder. <laughs> if I don't have freedom, I'm going to miss worship than God, but I know what could happen if I don't have freedom. I can only think of persecution. Right, yeah. Persecution comes a lot, 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 lot with when you don't have freedom. The, right, yep, I agree. All right, the thing about God's freedom is that it's for everybody and that there are no barriers other than the barriers that we put around it. Um, when God sent us Christ, it was to get rid of, first of all, the slavery to the law, which means all 642 whatever um, laws that came out of the Jewish life. Um, they could be rather stilting. And when Jesus walked around doing things on the Sabbath, he was breaking that law and showing people that people and life are more important than the laws. Now, in a nation, we need laws because we would be, I don't know why I'm speaking into that one, because we would be um, uh, trying to navigate a lawless society which didn't have any rules. And rules are important. You know, you, you teach your children certain things because the rules that they have to have in order to make them the people that they can possibly be. Uh, if you had no rules, you would have children that had no reason. Now, I have one example. Yeah, it looks like we're running out of time. All right, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> that phrase, um, love our neighbor, there was a... Uh, a gentleman whose son was 
um, full of addictions, and he kept trying to get him clean, and he finally thought he had him clean, and then he went to church, and he took communion, and at that time, they were still using wine in all of the congregations, and because of the wine in um, communion, his son fell off the wagon again. And his father worried about the other people that it might affect, that he might never know. The man's name is um, Dr. Welch, Dr. Thomas Bramwell Welch. He was a physician, and um, the more he thank, thought about what was going on with his son, the more he knew there had to be a change in the church. But the church didn't want to hear it because wine was traditional. But when we have communion, we don't use wine. We normally use Welch's grape juice. When I take communion to homes, I bring Welch's grape juice. And the reason we can do that is because Dr. Welch kept at it. He kept bugging his church until finally they agreed. And he made a non-fermented wine, the grape juice, for them to use. And that was in 1869. And since then, most of Protestant churches either have an option of non-wine or simply, like most Methodist churches, don't serve wine because a person's um, welfare is more important than that particular tradition. Alcohol wasn't a problem for him, it was for his son, but he did this not for his son, but for all the other people who might also be victimized by the, the wine. And so when you get communion next month, next week, think about why you are having juice. Freedom. I had a third one to do, but I'm not going to do it. So consider yourselves lucky people who didn't come. The freedom we have in this country is unique. But as I said in the beginning, the freedom from God takes precedent even over that freedom. Some of you would miss the faith side, the gift from God side. And others would miss things that our nation has to offer. But they're not mutu mutually exclusive. In fact, if we consider ourselves a Christian nation, which technically we are not, but for those of us in the church, we are. And because we are, the freedom that Christ gives informs the freedom that our nation gives. So parades and parties and fireworks, all kinds of things will mark our freedom but Christ's mark is upon us, and for freedom, Christ has set us free. And let the people say, Amen.